Morgus presents. Morgus presents is brought to you by Cox Communications, connecting you for 25 years. Stupid jobs, like how could you be around me and be so stupid? You're gonna be dead in three moves. <laughs> Oh, I knew that. Number two. <laughs> Goodbye, Chopsley. <laughs> oh, good evening, friends of science, <laughs> students, <laughs> those of you who are initiated, <laughs> and especially you doctors who received our special offer in the mail this week. <laughs> As most of you know, of course, we doctors are bound by the Hippocratic Oath, and as such, do many worthy assignments without pay or recognition. Well, I, Morgus, have set aside time to help my fellow doctors who cannot solve extremely difficult cases. You see, it's my way of getting the medical profession out of a jam and embarrassment. <laughs> now, of course, I'm not talking about regular sickness cases. I am talking about those things that you don't find in everyday medical books, my friends. And by the way, doctors, Everything you bring here to this clinic tonight will be in strict confidence. <laughs> oh, excuse me. That's probably some of the doctors calling right now. Uh, uh, look, go ahead and roll to something for a minute or so. I'll be right back. Oh, Chopper, you can't. Say it, say it, say This must be Frankie and Johnny at St. Claude and Franklin. Home of the easiest credit men in town. Newlyweds? Bankrupt on Social Security? When the others say no, we say yes. Let them have it. With no problem. Man, I've been everywhere. Everywhere I go, they say no credit, no deal. I need some credit now. You come to the right store, baby. See the special man. Let them have it. Yeah, you're right. I say, I say, I say, who say, I say, I say, Frankie say, I say, I say, when all the other stuff says no, Frankie says yes, see the special man. Let him have it with no problem. Come see Frankie and John at Easy Credit Store in town. And we've got 30 years of making your bad credit good. I got the credit! I say, I say, when you buy from me, you get chicken box free. Right now, Frankie and Johnny's is going to let you have a free 10 or 5 piece chicken box. Tastes like mama. Here they are, and we bake them fresh seven days a week. Mackenzie's Buttermilk Drops, only $2.29 a dozen. Their taste is guaranteed to be a smile wide. Mackenzie's Buttermilk Drops, made with the finest and freshest ingredients and cooked in soybean oil, great with coffee or milk, create a Mackenzie sensation for your whole family. Bring home the Mackenzie's Buttermilk Drops. Mackenzie's, you taste the difference. Something almost beyond comprehension is happening to a girl on this street in this house and a man has been sent for as a last resort this man is the exorcist rated r No, 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 no. There, there are no charge for referrals, doctor. No, we'll be open all night. I'm only glad to help you medical guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, already I'm getting calls from the doctors out there. I know a lot of you doctors are naturally a little nervous about coming to me. Uh, a lot of you naturally are embarrassed. But as I told you before, those of you who normally come to me and you know how to get here, the rest of you who have never come here, you know how to get up here. You don't have to come through the old city ice house. You could come up the back fire escape in the alley back there, onto the rooftop, and then come on into the attic. Of course, I didn't show a lot of you the other secret entrance here, but I, I guess I just as well. Because you doctors that haven't been here before know that we have a secret room behind the bookcase. So, uh, as a matter of... Oh! <coughs> oh, hi, Doc. Dr. Morgus, yeah. <clears throat> this is confidential, isn't it? Oh, very confidential. There's no, no way for anyone to know I'm here. Oh, I... I oh. Oh, uh, well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, doctor, look, <laughs> I didn't mean to... Oh, uh... oh, uh, uh, no. <clears throat> no! Oh, wait, 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 wait uh, a minute. no! Oh, Doc! <clears throat> Dr. Bruce Art! Dr. Bruce! Uh, oh, oh, gee. Now, look, uh, that's a little embarrassing. That, that was an accident. You see, he was supposed to disguise himself. Uh, the rest of you that come here... Uh, Put on some little, little, little disguise. Uh, uh, yeah, put, put, put something on your face and, and nobody will recognize you. And just come on up through there. Uh, 
I'm sorry about that, but uh, oh, all right, Charles. We're going to just finish this little chess association here while we wait for some of the referrals to get here. Okay, I usually let Chopsley work three moves to my one. <laughs> All right, there's my one move. You get three moves, Chopsley. Two. <laughs> oh, oh, this is awful. Oh, my. Let's see where well, I'll be. Look where my queen can move, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for Chopsley. All right, Chopsley, that's all. Now, listen. Boy. Oh, no, no, Chopsley, you know, we don't play that way. No, no, he wants, he wants me to move three times. Oh, no, Chopsley. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Chopsley. Uh, you see, folks, when you move three times, you've got to be a little careful because you can open up your position, and that's where they get to you, you know. <clears throat> all right, all right, Chopsley, I'll move the three times. Okay, let's see. I'll move this one here, my pawn, and I'll move my other bishop pawn to my bishop three, and then I'll move my knight pawn up to my knight two. <laughs> I got him all blocked. <laughs> you know, when you work around somebody like Chopsley, you, uh, you better be careful. <clears throat> oh, Chopsley, you're cheating. You're, you're doing what I did. Uh, you stay here. I want to punish that idiot, making me look like a fool. We probably have referrals already. We, uh, oh, oh, oh wait a minute. Uh, yeah, oh, well, look, uh, uh, a little early here. Oh, why don't you wait, wait, wait just a minute. I'll, I'll be out with you in, in just a minute here. Uh, I don't think we can show this on television. I don't think we can show this on television uh, so early. Uh. Let's take a break. Then the master returns. Damn it. Excuse me, sis. Marie, are you okay? Yeah. Hi, Tom. Good to see you. You know, it's not really your books I love. It's the fact that you're the only client who's always on time. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So anyway, now Brimley Books are offering the most money up front. But they want the rights to this, your next book. Tom. Yes? What? 
Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I don't know if I feel comfortable locking us in like that. I mean, it may very well be that Arrow is prepared to pay a much larger advance. Dreams, they're not real. Just dreams. It's just the imagination, Doc. It's how she writes her books. It's like she sees the stories in her mind or something. Yeah, maybe in the beginning. This time, her imagination's gone too far. You see, what you and your wife have got to face up to is the enormous pressure she's under as a best-selling author. Hey, do you want one? No, thanks. Doc, this is kind of coming at a bad time. I'm for Marie. She's got a deadline coming up on her new book, and it's, it's kind of important to No, me. no, no. That's not important. What is important is her state of mind. Her health should be your concern. It is my concern. I just meant... Look, what do you suggest that we do, huh? I mean, she can't just shut her mind off like a light. No. But she could turn it down. She needs to get away from all this excitement for a while. She needs a rest. And that means no work. Dr. Robinson's she needs to go somewhere where her imagination won't be simulated. All right. All right, I'll, uh, I'll find some place. Thanks. Look at this. Hey. <laughs> What's that? That is where you're driving me. It's almost terminally quaint, isn't it? Oh, it looks great to you. <laughs> Where'd you find it? Richard found it. Actually, I think he did it for Pierre. Isn't that right, baby? Ah, oh, Tom, smell that air. Can you believe this? Ah, oh, I should have done this months ago, you know it? It'll be good for you two to get away together. Yep. It's what our marriage needs at the moment. How long are you going to be away for? Three whole weeks. Richard's going to be driving back and forth to L.A., though. He's up for a big design job, did I tell you? No. Ah, he really needs this. I hope he gets it. He's been on such a downer lately. This would be great for him. Do you need any company while he's gone? <laughs> no way! You'd have me trying to write all the time. Forget about it. <laughs> well, I was just trying to be helpful. Yeah, well, you've done enough already. Thank you very much. Mind the moose. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Could be left, could be right. Sure, the hell wasn't speeding. Well, now, just where is it we're trying to get to? Good afternoon, officer. We're trying to find Drago. Drago, huh? 
Yeah, she and her husband are renting a cottage there. You staying here too? No, I'm a friend giving her a ride. Well, friend, you head on right. Little ways along, there's a break to her left. Now, you take that. But if you get to the town, you're gone too far. Thank you, officer. <laughs> 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 hey, baby. Hi. Tom. What a surprise. I didn't expect to see you here. Yeah, it was a last minute thing. Very cool to say goodbye. Tom politely volunteered. Knowing I'd say no, of course, so I said yes. <laughs> well, wasn't that nice of you, Tom? But look, can I get you a glass of champagne or something? Uh, look, don't worry. I gotta get going back to L.A. I mean, who knows if I drink and drive. I'll never find my way back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't you just stay here tonight? I mean, it looks like we have plenty of room. Look, Marie, sure... he's gotta get back. Tom's gotta get back, right? Look, uh, I'll see you when you get back in L.A. You two have a good time. You take care of her. Don't worry, buddy. I will. Look, if you need anything, just give me a call. Huh? Yes, sir. No. I mean it. I'll be fine, okay? I'll pin your number up on the wall just in case. <laughs> of course, we don't have a phone, but... See ya. Drive safe. So what do you think? It's perfect. It's really strange. It's like time stood still, isn't it? Where's all the kids and the, the barking dogs and... I don't know. Maybe they all went fishing. Very beautiful, aren't they? Have you seen anything you like?
These are interesting. Who's the artist? Me. These, these are all mine. You're the couple staying at the cottage. Yeah, how did you know? News travels fast in a small town. Oh. Well, hi. I'm Marie. This is my husband, Richard. I'm Eleanor. Well, we came into town for some groceries, but I'd like to come back another time and get some materials. Painting is a passion of mine, too. I'm says store is just across the way. Thank you. You have a nice shop. Oh, please stop by again when you have more time. in sheep's clothing, eh? She's probably like that to everybody. Yeah. You remember that and you won't go wrong. Are you jealous? <laughs> what, of a flirtatious shopkeeper? Give me a break. Uh, should I be? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Visitors, Mr. O. I hear him, Mrs. O. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Howdy. Howdy. You must be the new couple renting Wilderness Cottage, right? Here in your honeymoon? <laughs> More of a second honeymoon. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> we uh, need a couple of things here. Oh. All right. Oh. Well, this is quite a list you have here. So uh, why don't you and me go get the things and have the ladies get acquainted? Great. OK. Want to sit down, dear? You'll be wanting to know what goes on in these parts. Well, not much. Folks keep pretty much to themselves around here. We live our lives, mind our own business. Except for me, I mind everybody's business. <gasps> Morning, Sheriff. Your cigarettes are on the counter. Always that friendly. Hmm, had a little run in with him yesterday, huh? Mm hmm. <laughs> the sheriff can be a little surly, but he's a good man to have on your side when trouble comes knocking. How did you know I met the sheriff yesterday? Oh, everybody knows everything about him. About everybody, everybody around, around here. here, right. and video connection. Great selection, all the newest releases, and the best of adult videos. We buy used compact discs for $6. We sell used compact discs for $9. Located at 2108 Veterans and 3331 St. Charles. Hi, I'm Jerry Redo. And I'm Jerry Redo. At our family-owned body shop, guaranteed quality is a 28-year tradition. If you wreck it, we redo it at Redo's Body Shop. 4413 Reed Boulevard, call 246-4413. Beauty Mart's Easter special for just $3.99. Proline Soft and Beautiful Super Cream Relaxer gives harder straightened hair a silky style. Soft and Beautiful Cream Relaxer, $3.99 at all three Beauty Mart locations. Okay, I want you to take one of these pills once a year for five years and then come back to see me, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. You've changed my life. Uh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> oh, uh, hi, Doc. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm not going to blow your cover. <laughs> Bring him in here. Uh, all right. What's the problem, Doc? I don't know what's the matter with him, Doctor. The x-rays show nothing. I think it's psychological. Oh, his hand is stuck in the air? Stuck in the air. He never takes it down. Are you an orthopedic? I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Oh, 
Hey, I think I recognize you. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, would, I wouldn't oh. blow your cover. No, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll take care of this one. Okay, Doc. Thanks. You're quite welcome. Okay. What's your name, sir? Wayne. Oh, Wayne. Oh, step over here, Wayne. We're going to talk a little bit. <laughs> Wayne may have a little problem here. Uh, how long has this been like this, Wayne? Oh, as far as I can remember. Oh, really? It stays like that a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm, lots okay, of times. I'll tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna have a little hypnosis here. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been hypnotized? No. <laughs> you doctors watch this quickie. I'm gonna count up to ten, and I just want you to watch the tip of my stethoscope. One, no, no, watch the tip of the testicle. One, two, three. You're starting to get a little sleepy, Wayne. Oh, look at that. Your eyes are already blinking. Four, five. You wanna go into a deep sleep? I did it in five. <laughs> that beats them all, eh? <laughs> Wayne, you feel that? Feel that? <laughs> okay, we're going to talk into Wayne's past. Wayne, we're going back to your childhood. How old are you, Wayne? Five years old. Five years old. Well, where are we right now, Wayne? <laughs> in school. Oh, we're in school. And who am I? Miss Murphy. Oh, I'm Miss Murphy, of course, and we're in school. Uh, uh, oh, why do you have your hand up, Wayne? I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, well, that's awful. You mean I didn't let you go to the bathroom, of course. Okay, Wayne, I'll tell you what. I want you to slowly open your eyes, Wayne, and guess what? I'm going to let you go to the bathroom. Yes, get up, get up from your seat. Really? Now, boys and girls, don't make fun of Wayne. He has to go to the... No, 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 not, not in there. That's the secret room. <laughs> no, go out in the hallway, and then down the hallway, you'll find a little door down there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Miss... Hurry, 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 hurry. We don't want to... <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. You see, in this business, you've got to take them all in here, friends. As a matter of fact... Yes, yes, come on in here. Come... Oh, <laughs> Somebody's behind the bookcase, of course. That's where they're supposed to come in. Yes, come in, please. Thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought you were... Uh... Uh, no, one of my kids' masks here. Oh, yeah. I borrowed. Doc, uh, I'm in trouble here. I've got the big one. What do you mean, the big one? The big one. Wolfsbane virus. Wolfsbane virus? Wolfsbane virus. You have a werewolf? I've got the big one. As yes. a patient? Yes. In this country? Yes, he's, he's right outside here. How long have you been working with him? I've been working with him for about a year now, and uh, I've, I've come to no conclusions. I've come to nothing. I've found nothing. Oh, gosh, this could be an epidemic. Uh, uh, one uh, is an epidemic, Doctor, when oh, you see this. Oh, oh I can help. I can, you know I, I have a case. Yes, I, I know. You, you do. You have a female here, as I understand. Yes, and she's got the, the Himalayan type, you know. Yes. She can't come back. <laughs> Let me get him for you, Doctor. No, bring him in here. Marvin? Werewolf. Werewolf. Dr. Morgus? Marvin. Oh, hi, Marvin. Oh, Marvin, listen, don't worry about a thing. Dr. Morgus will be able to help. You're in good hands with this man. Yes, and of course, you know, we'll have you out of here tonight like everybody but else. Doctor, oh. speaking of tonight, full moon tonight, I think you should tie him up now. Full moon? Yes. To tonight? Tonight. Uh, oh, I can handle that. <laughs> listen, we don't... Oh, oh, excuse me, just, 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 I have a little case here. Uh, oh, don't worry, Wayne. Miss Murphy, thank you. I feel so much better. Okay, Wayne. Listen, you just relax now. At the count of three, you're going to be normal, and you're no longer five years old. One, two, three. Hey, Wayne. I'm Dr. Morgus. You're all right. Hey. <laughs> I am. I'm okay. Your arm is down. My arm is down. Thank you, Doctor. I feel fine. I'm so pleased. Well, I can My help. wife is so pleased. Well, she will be. You run home to your wife. <laughs> and, Thank you. And Thank wave you, to her for me. <laughs> See how we help things, Doc? Well, listen, uh, you step right over here. I'm going to talk to the Doc a little minute here. Uh, just relax there, Marvin. Doc, uh, it's very imperative. Time is of the essence. Listen, this could be an epidemic. Don't tell anyone, okay? I can handle it, okay? Thank you. You just take your time. You just leave it to me, all right? Thank you. All Thank right. you, Doctor. You're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Uh, I'll be over there in a minute, Marv. <laughs> Folks, uh, we have a little serious problem here. Uh, don't pass the word in the community yet, but this could be an epidemic. I know you don't believe in werewolves, but there is a disease called Wolfsbane. Stay right there. You ain't seen nothing yet. Okay.
Mike. He's been missing all day. Marie, he is a dog. He's probably out in the woods chasing rabbits or chipmunks or something. The woods are heaven to a house dog. There's no need to run up and talk to the sheriff. We know that Good afternoon, Sheriff. My dog is missing. It's a white poodle. Dogs run off all the time. Folk around here don't get too concerned. There's no big animals hereabouts. Hmm. And what's that howling? Only howling I ever heard was a coyote. And that was a good many years ago. Well, do you think you could keep a lookout for him, please? Pierre won't starve out there. He'll be back just like a man with his tail between his legs. <laughs> you don't believe that, dear? I'd like to, Mrs. O. It's just that there's something so sinister about these woods. Every night I've been hearing this howling. Well, it's probably just owls. The woods are full of them. <laughs> Sounds so evil, though. Things always sound scarier at night. Why, Mr. Old Snorri scares the bejesus out of me. <laughs> Don't let it worry you. I know, it's probably nothing. You're probably right. Who used to live in the cottage? Oh, a lovely couple. She was a dear. Nothing was too much trouble for her. Then one day they just up and left. Never said a word. I still miss them. Well, it's time you were off. It's gonna get dark and forests are tricky things. I've noticed you don't drive. No. Doctor's orders. <laughs> well, you better be off. Thank you for listening. All right. I'll see ya. Right? Bye. Who was she asking after? Help the couple that had the cottage before them. Oh. Sorry. I thought I, I thought it was a Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I just I thought you were somebody else. You're going back to your cottage? Yeah. If you go that way across a swing bridge, it's much quicker for you. Thanks.
What is it? 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 What are, you, what are you talking Something's about? Something's following me out there. Hey, Marie, what in the hell happened? I found Pierre. I found just his head. And then something was following me through the woods. I didn't feel it. Marie, now calm down. Now, come on, explain to me what happened. I was in the cave by the swing bridge, you know? Uh -huh. And then something was following me, Richard. I could feel him. Followed me all the way home. He's out there. I feel him. All right, all right, come on, come on, come on, come, calm down. I'm gonna go see. You. No, Richard, don't go. It's don't okay. Wait. I'm gonna Richard, go see. Don't it's okay. Go I'm gonna make out sure. There. I need. It's okay. Don't leave me, Richard. It's okay. I'm gonna go see. Hi. Hi. Are you Marie Adams? Yes. I'm Janice Hatch. I'm uh, here on vacation. Well, actually, over at the Twin Forks Hotel. And I, I hope I'm not being too forward, but I'm a big fan of your books and. When I heard you were down here, I really wanted to meet you. Come on in. I just made some coffee. Come on. I'm not interrupting or anything? No, of course not. Don't be silly. Come on. Hello, Richard. I was just, uh, passing by, and I thought, well, I remembered that my wife wanted some artist supplies. So? It was a great book. But how do you keep all those characters and complicated events straight? Ah, uh, it's hard to explain. I see it in my mind. Almost as if it's real. Anything else? I thought maybe a present. Something uh, special. Something like this. You have very good taste. It's got great detail. Oh, I just love it here during the day. During the night, though. Uh... I get so scared. I keep hearing these sounds that really frighten me. It's probably because I'm just a city girl. What sounds? Well, it's like these howling sounds. Howling? Yeah. Have you heard that? Me? No. No, but a friend of mine used those same words. What, she heard it here? I'm not sure. Well, what? What'd she say? Well, until recently, I, I was a nun. I 
had a very close friend in the convent, Sister Ruth. She disappeared a year ago, last February. Two weeks later, the Mother Superior called me and said Sister Ruth had been found in Drago. She was almost incoherent and babbling on about finding the devil and the sound of bells and, and then the howling. She was never able to tell us what happened. She was very frail. She refused to eat, and a month ago, she died. I left the convent and came here. I had to find out what happened. Have you? All I know is the sheriff here said he found her wandering in the woods. And you think that Sister Ruth heard the same sounds as I did, right? I don't know. But she used those same words. Janice, do you mind if I helped you find out what happened? Thanks for my present. I love it. It's beautiful. See, so you went back to the big bad wolf again, huh? Hey, I picked it up. I'm just kidding. Thank you. I have something I got to show you. What? I found this. I didn't imagine it, Richard. Honey, I practically searched the whole area on my knees. And this is all I could find. The light can play tricks on you, and you've got to admit this does look like a dog's head. You think he's still alive, then? Let's hope so. Everybody's trying to get the secret to the Castle Burger. I think I've got it. <laughs> There's only one original Castle Burger, and Tasty's got it. The Castle Burger, hot off the grill, and it's only 39 cents, or three for just one seventeen. The original Castle Burger. Hurry, shop for you idiot. What time is it? It's time for Tasty. Hi, I'm Ricky Ron, famous comic strip character and radio personality. Of course, you may have heard of my equally famous record store, Ricky Ron. If it's music you're looking for, I've got it. From classic goldies to collector's items to the latest releases by your favorite artists. <laughs> it's all here at incredibly low prices. Come by and see me at Record Ron. 1129 Decatur Street. Oh, and tell me I thank you. And don't forget, Record Ron's is open seven days a week, 11 to 7. Why is Record Ron lying down? Because I'll do anything to get your attention. Hi, I'm Record Ron, famous comic strip character and TV personality. Let's talk about records. OPs, 45s, 78s, and cassettes. I've got them all. I buy, sell, and trade all these collector's items and the latest releases by your favorite artists. If you think I'm just flying around, come by and see me at Record Ron's, 1129 Decatur Street, in the French Quarter. And I'll be 
Okay, I just have to ask you a few more personal questions. Uh, how many times have you been married? Uh, six. Six? Six. I, I can't keep a wife. No, I guess not. <laughs> you always hurt the one you love, as they say. <laughs> Sounds like a song. Oh, uh, there they are. Listen, uh, some of you people have been calling in the television station that runs my experiments here and complaining that we're making up all of this, that there's no such thing as wolf's bane disease and virus. Listen, this fellow may have it. The reason why you people don't believe it is because we haven't had it in this century. And that's why we're right here exposing ourselves on television. This could happen right here tonight. I'm looking into this very serious problem. As a matter of fact, you doctors, forget the referrals. I cannot handle any more cases tonight at all. This is very important, very contagious. I got a couple more questions to ask you. Uh, what kind of hobby do you have? Well, I, I ra raise roses. Say that again. I, I raise roses. You raise roses? Yeah, beautiful roses. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. My grandfather wrote a whole treatise on that. Roses, that's what could be the cause. How long have you been doing this? Four or five years. Oh, hold on a minute. Oh, here we go, here we go. Himalayan, Himalayan rose, yes. So far, okay. Yes, high altitudes produce the finest roses, but cause the white, the white powder of wolf's bane inside the rose, contagious for werewolf can oh, all high out do any of your roses come from any high altitudes from the rocky mountains do you have rocky mountain roses the most beautiful roses from the rocky oh, Mountains. no wait a minute oh uh, look uh, if any of you people out there i don't want to frighten you right now if you have roses in your garden you may not know whether they're rocky mountain or or all the yellow roses of texas but you go and check your roses and see if there's any white powder inside the white powder can get under your fingernails and when you're eating sandwiches and things it gets into your bloodstream chocolate that's right mrs finish she raises roses i want you to go down to her apartment and get a couple of roses from bring them here and bring a glass of water i want to make a test uh, look, you get on this table over here. I want to I check out something here. Okay. Uh, now, don't be alarmed. We'll be able to help. We'll be able to help you here. I have a little surprise. See this? You know what that is? It's an umbrella. <laughs> That's right, an umbrella. And, of course, it opens up like that, all right? Except this is a special impregnated umbrella. I put a special chemical on it, and it deflects moonlight, just like the sunlight deflects the sun from the, you know, the rays, the ultraviolet rays. This deflects the moonlight, and anybody that would have or possibly have the wolfsbane disease could possibly turn into a werewolf, could keep the moonlight off of their skin. And that's the whole idea. Now, you hold this over your head uh -huh. and cover it up because I'm going to turn on a little moon ray, okay? You just stay just like that. <laughs> Watch this. Okay, let me turn that on, and I'll open up the moonlight here. Okay, 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 okay. Now let go, you'll see on the umbrella here. You see, that's moonlight. And if his face is right under there. And of course, let me show you. Let's see if he turned. No, don't be frightened, don't be frightened. Let, let it go, let it go, don't worry. Now, you notice? You're okay. It worked. Oh, oh, Chopsley, bring it in here. Oh, yes, uh, bring it over here, Chopsley. You got the water? Okay. Well, friends, as I explained, according to my grandfather's uh, observations, it's a beautiful rose. If the rose has the white powder, which I cannot see, if you put it into the water, it'll tell you right away because the road will bleed according to the theory here. So I'm gonna place it right into the water. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I haven't seen a rose turn anything red. We may, we may have an epidemic here. We may have Wolfsbane epidemic. Uh, Oh, Chops, where are you going, Chopsley? Where do you think you're... Oh, don't worry about him. Look, you sit back. I'm going to have to turn you into a werewolf right away. No, Doc, can't you don't use worry. a female? No, I can't use my female. She has a, a totally different case. Hold steady. Hold steady. All right. This will only take a minute, friends. I'm going to put the moonlight on you. You relax. Just stay straight. Stay straight. All right. All right. The moon ray will be right on you. Okay, hold it for a second. Oh, it's changing. Look, it's changing. Chopsley, Chopsley, we, we have a werewolf. All right, Chopsley, get the repellent. <laughs> All right, Marvin, 
We're going to take care of you in just a moment. You got it, Chopsley. All right, spray it all over me. Quickly, quickly. You don't think old Morgus is that dumb, do you? <laughs> Guess what this is? Werewolf repellent. Comes from skunk oil. <laughs> and you... <coughs> As a matter of fact, even I can't take very much. All right, Marvin. Marvin, I want to train you a little bit, Marvin. All right. All right, take it easy, Marvin. We're going to be friends. We're going to be friends. <laughs> you see, the skunk, the skunk oil. Go ahead. Stay tuned for more from Morgus. Hi. You don't know what bit you, huh? No. Your ankle's starting to swell a little bit. Okay, is that too tight, Paula? No, that feels okay. fine. You a doctor? God, no. I did do you in medical school, though. I qualify for a bandage, but that's about it. You guys aren't from around here, are you? No, New York, driving and hiking through California. John's idea of a hike is a forced march. <laughs> we came to see the bell tower in Drago. The bell tower? Yeah. It's a replica of the 16th century bell tower from Europe, and the bell is the original. Quite a history behind it. Evidently, the bell was rung to summon the townspeople, and when they were all inside, the tower was burned down. Apparently, there were no survivors. Is that a true story? Yeah, well, I read it in an old National Geographic. You okay, honey? I think we should be going now. Listen, my husband will be back soon. Why don't you guys just stick around and we'll drive you back into town? Look, thanks for your help, but my Chevy camper's parked close by. Okay. Make sure you see the doctor and Drago, though, okay? Will do. That could get infected. Thanks again. Listen, have you guys seen a little white poodle? I lost him a couple of days ago. I think he might be in the woods. No, afraid not. But if we see him, we'll bring him to you. Okay, hon? No problem. Did you hear that? Yeah, what is it? Maybe it's Marie's dog. Sounds like it's hurt. I'm gonna check it out.
Boil the water, honey. Your man Don brung home the bacon. <laughs> I picked this up while I was in L.A. Thought it might make you feel a little bit safer. <laughs> All right. All right, I, I promise. Tomorrow night, I shoot a chicken instead. Tomorrow night, let's go out for dinner. <laughs> Did you hear that, Richard? Richard, you heard that, didn't you? Yeah, I heard it, but it was probably... No, no, no buts, Richard. You heard that. You see, I told you I didn't imagine it. Marie, it was probably a coyote. Maybe he's in heat. You coming up? I'm just gonna finish the dishes first. Now I know why they invented paper plates. I'll be up in a minute. This is your last trip to L.A. I don't know what they expect from you. I, you've practically done the whole job already. I know, Marie, but if that's what it takes, that's what it... That's what it takes. Look, Marie, if I get this job, it jumps me into a whole new league. And then they're gonna be coming to see me. I know. Look, I'm sorry. Tell your friend Janice I, I don't mean to be rude. I gotta go. I know. Okay. I'll see you this afternoon, all right? You bet. Mm, I love you. Yeah. All right. Wish me luck. Good luck. Bye. Bye. I saw Sister Ruth last night. What? I know this is gonna sound crazy. Maybe it is, but I saw her here, and the expression on her face was like something horrible was happening right here in my living room. Like, I don't know what. I told you I have quite an imagination. And there's something else, too. These hikers I met yesterday told me about the bell tower in Drago. Didn't you say something about Sister Ruth and the sound of bells? The bell is original from Europe, 16th century. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, nothing to see down there. Ah, uh, it's dangerous. Fire hazard. It's been condemned. The whole place is infested with termites. What was it for? Oh, fire alarm. They'd ring that bell when there was a fire and everybody would come running. A sight you wouldn't believe. Well, come on, girls. Don't get yourselves hurt down there. Who's that? 
That was Mrs. Ormstead. She owns a general store there. She's really nice. Taking that camper. County impound. It's an abandoned no, vehicle. No, it's not. It belongs to some friends of mine. Pam, we found out on the forest road. The sheriff told me to haul it out of here, and that's what I'm doing. Where's the sheriff? You have a problem, ma'am? That camper there, I know who owns it. That's good, because no one else does. He's got no license plates, no papers. He's found up in the woods. Probably been there a week now. No, no, no. This couple I met yesterday, it's theirs. Well, then, your friends ain't got much respect for their own property. Because in this territory, we call it an abandoned vehicle. Excuse me, ma'am. I got a lot of work to do. Move it on out! What was all that about? Remember that couple I told you I met yesterday? They said they had a Chevy camper. Without license plates? Something's happened to them, I know it. Okay, look, you just hang out here, okay? And warn me if anybody comes around. young couple came by here. Perhaps they hitched the lift to Twin Forks Hospital. Thanks for your help, Doctor. Uh, sorry I couldn't do more. Doctor, about a year ago, you treated a nun. Her name was Sister Ruth. The sheriff said you might be able to give us some information about her. Yes, Sister Ruth. Terrible, terrible thing. She was found wandering in the woods, near Catatonic. In the woods? Hmm. The sheriff said she was found at my place, at Wilderness Cottage. Now, as I recall, the sheriff found her in the woods. Janice was a very close friend of hers, and I was reading about her case, me being a writer and everything. Oh, of course. You're a visiting celebrity author. Well, if I can be of any more help, don't hesitate to stop by. Thank you. Thank you. Why did you mention Wilderness Cottage? Is it because you saw Sister Ruth there? Yeah, somehow Ruth and the cottage are connected. Yeah, hello. Hello, Tom. Hi, it's Marie. Tom, can you do me a favor? I'm working on a real mystery here. We'll talk about my health another time, okay? Just listen to me. You know that little friend of yours in the DA's office? If I give you a New York license number, could you find out whether it belongs to a John Simmons or Paula Johnson? Sure. Did Sister Ruth say anything when you saw her in the hospital? I couldn't make any sense out of what you were saying. I barely recognized her. The only thing she said was, well, it's 
sounded like we are all in fear. I don't know what terrified her so, but the devil must have touched her. Because after that, she never became normal again. When you found her in the hospital, did they say whether or not they found her in the woods or in the cottage? I thought I can't remember. Marie thinks she might have been in the cottage she's renting. Well, that I don't know. I remember she was suffering from exposure in the forest. Maybe she was in the woods and sought refuge in your cottage. Father, there's no church in Draco. Your parish here in Twin Forks must be the closest one. Do any of them ever come here to your services? No. Isn't that unusual? It is strange. But the people from Drago are a community unto themselves. They have been for as long as I remember. Well, I'm here if you need me. Are you going to tell Richard what we're doing? What, are you kidding? He thinks I'm on the edge already. It was a dream, Marie. A bad dream. There's no place in my life for routine. I've had it up to here with the same old scene. I got a taste for living that's out of control. Popeye's spicy chicken going around my soul. Got a raging cage of craving. Uh -huh. For Popeye's chicken, I love this spicy chicken. That crazy changing flavor, boy. Woo! From Popeyes, it's gonna ride my soul. Woo! Kingly adventure of Bernard Siding and the House Doctor. Well, Doctor? If you had waited any longer, it would have been too late. Is this a difficult operation? I've been handling problems like this for over 26 years. When can you operate? The doctor can begin immediately installing beautiful aluminum siding to enhance your home. Call now and find out how this minivan could be yours in all sides See America sweepstakes. Let the doctor fill your prescription for home improvement. Bernard Siding's House Doctor, 738-3126. Sail into the tropical world of waterbeds of Blue Bayou. Come and check out this all-wood waterbed, only $199. This super saver waterbed, only $299. For just $399, this waterbed... <laughs> All right, let's do it like I said. Okay. Squeeze it up right in your arm like that. And look through the sight. Got it. Give it a shot. Line it 
up with the thing right in your shoulder and you look right through the side. <laughs> And the God, I guess. I guess. I'd love to be able to live in a place like this. How did you find it? I lucked out. I ran into the developer that owns the place. Funny guy. Guess it's been empty for about a year. February, I think. Did he say you lived in it before? Some old couple. Why? What are you two up to? No reason. Just curious. Doesn't that seem like quite a coincidence? I mean, Sister Ruth arrives at about the same time the couple leaves. Uh, I'm going to run into a town. We're low on supplies. Oh, you want me to come with you? No, no. It's a one-man job. Okay. Bye. I might stop in the bar and grab a drink. I shot it at Wolfred, Richard. 
It was outside. Give me the gun. I'm gonna go look. Give me the gun. Stay here. Okay. Did you see anything? Janice, it's all coming apart. I can't even believe what I see anymore. I believe you. I checked back into the history of Drago. The bell in that tower came from a village called Draga, a village in Romania. Do you know why all the villagers died in that fire? The fire that burned down the bell tower? People in a nearby community burnt them alive. They believed one of the villagers from Drago was a werewolf. A werewolf, Janice? Oh, come on. It sounds crazy, but that's what they believed. You know, the church still accepts the existence of the devil. And werewolves, which are another form of the devil, have been recorded for centuries. Janice, I shot a wolf, OK? Or something that looked like a wolf. It wasn't some devil. But, Marie, but if there had been some form of a werewolf, and if Sister Ruth saw... OK, just stop it, all right? Just stop it right there. Whatever caused Sister Ruth to lose it was real, all right? Don't you get it? It wasn't some mythical, mystical devil incarnate. Janice, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I just, I don't know anything anymore. More questions about Sister Ruth? No, no, it's about me. I haven't been able to sleep very much, and I thought maybe you could refill my Valium prescription. That should be easy to fix. Doctor, I shot at a wolf last night. <gasps> Marie, are you sure? I'm positive. Well, I'm not exactly positive I shot at a wolf, but something tried to attack me last night. Uh, I've never heard of a wolf in these parts. Perhaps it was a raccoon. They're the most persistent scavengers around. Uh, they can be pretty mean at night. Easy to mistake. That had to be the biggest raccoon I've ever seen. Shadows do things. If you haven't been sleeping, um, perhaps your mind is, well, probably overreacted. I've been having some pretty wild dreams. I even thought that the house was haunted by the people who used to live there. I saw them. It was like they were trying to warn me about something. Don't worry. There's nothing in the forest or in your house to harm you. Well, no, I think I ought to warn you that your stairs have already claimed a victim. The previous resident fell down them and damaged his hip. Is that why they left Drago? Hmm. He needed specialist treatment. And they went after some famous Jewish hospital in New York. 
take one of those. Half hour before going to bed, huh? Thank you, Doctor. I think I needed your advice as much as I needed these. Uh, hello? Tom, hi, it's Marie. Any luck with that license plate? Uh, yes. But it wasn't registered under, uh, what was the name you gave me? Johnson and Simmons. It was registered under the name of Brooks. Tom, listen. Let me ask you something serious now, okay? Don't laugh. Do you believe in werewolves? Yeah, only in the late show, though. You're not being very serious. Well, I certainly hope you're not. Look, is this the real mystery you're working on? No, of course not. I just asked because there's a legend about werewolves. Ah, oh, a werewolf story. Well, maybe that Tom, is a good idea. Tom, I am on vacation. <laughs> okay, Tom, thanks. Bye. Bye. We struck out. The license plates weren't theirs. I think it's time I talked to Richard. Are you sure that's what you want to do? Nope. How much more am I supposed to take? You put together a few bad dreams and a frustrated lesbian, and you come up with howling werewolves and demented nuns. Christ, you even involved Tom on my back. Richard, I know that this sounds very strange. No, this doesn't sound strange, Marie. It is strange. You know, I blame myself for this. I really do. I blame myself for going down to L.A. and leaving you here alone. You were supposed to be resting, Marie. You weren't supposed to be running around with Janice like a couple of Ghostbusters. No wonder your dreams are getting worse. Richard, did you hear that? <sighs> That's it, Marie. That is it. Tomorrow, I'm taking you back to L.A., and we're getting you to see a shrink. Where are you going? I'm going out, Marie. I need some air, all right? Werewolves. Yeah. Don't go out there. It's still out there. Eyes. Back up, back up, back up, Marvin. Back up. That's a good boy. All the way and relax. Okay. Okay, we're going to bring you back, Marvin. Oh, hi, friends. We've got him tranquilized, and we're just going to turn on the sunlight here. 
the artificial sunlight in just a second. All right, here it is. There it is. Now watch. Uh-huh, uh-huh. At the ultraviolet rays of bringing him back. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Marvin. You should be okay. <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, fine. Did I hurt anyone that time? No. Oh. You didn't hurt anyone, and we're very proud of you. You've helped this country. You've helped people out there who are worried. And the rest of you realize that if something would strike your neighborhood, we'll be able to help you. And that's not the end of it. Marvin, you stay right where you are. I got a little surprise for you. You got it, Chopsley? <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. There it is. Well, you know, old Morgus wouldn't let you down, my friends. We had something up our sleeves just for something like this. Bring it over here, bring it over here. Got the bottles ready? We not only have the skunk oil, we not only have the umbrellas, <laughs> we have a cream. You've heard of sunscreen, you know, mm -hmm. you keep the sun off to create, you know, prevention of cancer and all that sort of thing. We have a little cream here, it looks like molasses almost, but it prevents the delta rays of the moonlight to get on your skin. You can actually wear it, J just relax. Uh, of course, it's pink right now. We can make it skin color later on, depending on the color of your skin. But uh, we're going to put some on your face here, and we're going to give it a real chest here. Now, I'll try to get a close-up of this, you guys and gals down at the station, because this is a, a big psychological boost for people that are worried about getting uh, the wolf's bane disease. I see this cream will keep the moonlight from his skin, and, uh, and we'll be able to turn it on and... Of course, nothing will happen here. Okay, that's about it. You just hold it right there, Marvin. All right, move out of the way, Chops. Okay, now we're going to turn on the moonlight this time. Back to the delta rays. Okay, we take out the alpha rays, and we put in the delta rays, and we turn it on. Okay, now, now back to the moonlight. Let's see if that does anything. You'll see. You see that? It ripped. No, don't worry. Don't worry, Marvin. Nothing to worry about. Look at that. No werewolf. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no problem. Chopsy, clean up his face. Give me that stuff here. We're going to show our friends what we do with this. All right. While he's cleaning Marvin up there, we're going to show you people out at home. You have nothing to worry about. Those of you who have called in worried about your husbands howling rather than snoring, getting the wolf spain disease, or any werewolves that might come into your neighborhood. I know how ridiculous this must sound, but we are gonna offer this moon screen cream to, pre to prevent any attacks on you or any afflictions of werewolf problems. We'll have the Morgoso Big M Skunk Oil. Now, of course, this will keep anything away from you, as you know, <laughs> including bill collectors. <laughs> but of course, it would keep werewolves away. And as you know, maybe you don't know, it's really not a well-known fact. But werewolves do not like skunk oil. <laughs> oh, they, they really repel it, as you know. So this will be available. In fact, we'll be out putting that on the street. We'll have the moon screen cream, as you see here. That will be available. And by the way, we're not going to try to make a big buck out of this. Maybe, you know, nine or ten bucks. That's about all we want out of this. And, of course, the umbrellas. But I want you friends to know that you can sleep tonight. If something happens, you call us right away, or you come on down to the old city ice house. We'll keep the doors open tonight, and we'll be selling this. As a matter of fact, Chopsley, I want you to get this table, take it downstairs later, and uh, we're going to set up a little stand, just in case some people will need some of these products. Now, as far as the rest of you are concerned, if you don't believe this, well, you know, just go ahead back to your beer or your drink or something. Stay with us. The best is yet to come. All right, Chopsley, I have one more for you here. <laughs> oh, there you are. We're uh, getting Chopsley ready. One, two, three, four. All right, uh, I want you to sell these for about $25. Uh, don't rip anybody off like you did last time, all right? <laughs> okay, uh, Chopsley's going to be down in the street and uh, helping some of you people who are a little worried. Now, as you know, friends, uh, some people do not take this seriously. Every time we try to help the medical profession, there are people who call up and say, oh, this is a lot of nonsense. There's no such thing as a werewolf. Well, there's one right over there, Marvin. There's a poor man. Not only is he a werewolf, he's a Himalayan werewolf. He has been bitten by Laverne, one of our inside werewolves that we've been taking care of. And of course, there's nothing I can do for him, and that's why I've called the zoo. They've got to come and get him. I cannot keep him here. 
Now, I don't want this to happen to you, so those of you who don't take me seriously are making a big mistake. If you have any doubts about whether or not you have the wolf's bane disease in your rose bushes, you get on down here and pick up some of this moon salve and get some of this repellent. There could be werewolves on the street in the next 24 hours, I promise you. And remember, Morgus told you. <laughs> All right, go ahead down there, Chopsy. All right. What we have here, of course, is, I guess you can call it dedication. Uh, I know a lot of doctors uh, are a little embarrassed about... He'll be okay. A few scratches, bump on the head, now a concussion. But his shoulder... The bite marks. Bite marks? There weren't any bite marks. Just a few scratches. Dr. Richard was attacked by a wolf. He fell down a gully, Marie. Excuse me. Richard. Your shoulder. You said you were attacked by a wolf. A wolf, Marie? I fell down a gully. Onto some rocks. It's just a scratch. Last night, he told me that he was attacked by a wolf. He was probably a little delirious from the fall. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Well... Goodbye. Bye. Sorry to keep you waiting. Father, do you have a book on exorcism? Exorcism, Janice? Yes, the Roman Rituals book. Sister Ruth asked me about that book. Did you lend it to her? No. And it's not here. Maybe she just took it. You don't think she was planning to do an exorcism? Oh, no. No, she would know, as you know, only priests can perform exorcisms. You know, I don't ever recall seeing that book again. Oh, by the way, I have the Bible Sister Ruth left at the church here. May I keep it, Father? Don't see why not. Thank you. It means a great deal to me. Richard, what are you doing? I'm going out. You should be resting in bed. It's okay, Marie. I feel great. Look, Janice, 
This whole Sister Ruth thing, I should never have said that I would help you. I had a nervous breakdown in L.A. I couldn't tell what was real and what was dreams. Last night, I even imagined that Richard was attacked by a wolf. My doctor sent me here to rest, and instead, I'm trying to solve some mystery that probably isn't. Are you saying that, that you imagined everything that's happened? Dreams. That's, that's all they were. It was nothing supernatural, no ESP. They were just dreams. That's it. And the vision of Sister Ruth? I, I don't know. All I know is that Richard fell down a gully and banged himself up. And I convinced myself that he was attacked by a wolf. I even bandaged the bite on his shoulder. It took both Richard and the doctor to convince me that there was no bite. It was all in my mind. Tom. Hi, Tom. Come on in. Come on. Janice, this is Tom Billings. So you're Janice? Yeah. Did I interrupt something? No, no, I, I gotta go. I um, have to get back to the hotel at Twin Forks. Well, bye, Marie. Bye, Janice. Uh, is this something I said? No, I said too much. So, the real mystery was unreal, huh? Yep, I'm afraid so. I got all confused and I brought you up here for no reason. I'm sorry. You son of a bitch! Get out. Richard, Tom didn't mean anything by that. Get out. Talk to you about Marie. Come on in. It was all my fault. I, I was trying to find out what happened to my friend, Sister Ruth. I got Marie involved and put all kinds of thoughts into her head. You mean that werewolf nonsense? That and many other things. But what about the license plates? It was all part of it. Yeah. She even got the names wrong. The license plates belong to somebody called Brooks. Brooks? But that couldn't be. That was Sister Ruth's last name. Sister Ruth Brooks. Well, then... That old couple that rented the cottage. father. Because they're trying to hide something. Something happened to them, and Sister Ruth must have discovered it. And now you and Marie come digging around. It sounds like Ruth's parents were murdered. And probably the hitchhikers as well. But I still don't understand why. The townspeople are trying to hide some secret. Marie saw it in her visions. She's in danger. 
Look, I'm going to tell Marie and Richard to leave Drago tonight. I'm coming with you. What, you think it's any different for you? I'm going to drive you back to your hotel. I want you to pack and leave. Today. Come on. We are all in fear. What? Nothing. Just something Sister Ruth said. Good to get back to L.A., won't it? Guess I'm really just a city girl at heart. I'll pack right after dinner, okay? I can't go yet. Why not? I just can't. Well, when then? I don't know when. Christ, Marie, will you stop hassling me? The devil's hatred for God has turned man into a habitation for demons. Demons. Werewolves.
Inside. You must set it on fire. What about you? I must ring the bell to summon the werewolves. Go now, quick, before they get both of us. Go!
embarrassed about having to come to me <laughs> in my humble surroundings, but you know I've helped them. You've seen it on television like you see every week on television. I stick my big head out here and I let everybody know that it's me, Morgus, who's helping this country and setting the medical profession right. I'm trying to help everybody. And of course tonight is no different. And the fact that I have put my own reputation on the line to help not only the doctors, but those of you who have incurable, impossible type of diseases. <laughs> you can thank me, my friends, all of you out there, for every single thing that goes on here, every single day. <laughs> Take it easy. Don't scare him. Tune in next week when Morgus, the Magnificent, takes us into the realm of science. Good night. Pleasant dreams. <laughs>